sound speeds. And despite doing what I believe to be a solid review of the DD Pro timecode devices, the TC13 pack of sync boxes, and the TCSL1 timecode slate, there was an interesting question posted in the DD user group on Facebook. How effective are these devices in freezing cold weather? Hmm. Until only a few days ago, putting these devices in my freezer would be the only way I would have to test them in freezing temperatures. But then we were blessed with a cold front that came through, dropping the temperatures as low as 5 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 15 degrees Celsius. I say blessing because this allowed me to do testing in a way that I normally wouldn't be able to do outside in nature. So what I did is I took the same Master TC1 that I used in my review and I jammed all the other devices off of that and then left the Master inside the climate controlled warm house and I put all the other devices outside in the freezing cold. For a photo op only and well the thumbnail of this video, I put the TC1s on top of a frozen water bucket on my back porch. But my goal here is to test and see how well the sink is maintained 12 hours after they were jammed and 24 hours after they were jammed. Let's get right into it. Lab, all the BPTRX is over here, and as you can see, it's right now 7 degrees, and I'm recording time code at 2 a.m. or 2.20 a.m. in the middle of the night. So, Master is on channel 1, TC1 is on channel 2, TC2 is on channel 3, and the slate is on channel 4. It's still quite cold out here. How cold? Well, my phone is sitting on a bucket of frozen water. That's how cold. And it's the same configuration as last night where my sound device is Mix Pre 6. is recording four channels right now where channel number one is the Master TC1. Channel number two is the TC1. Channel three is the TC2. And the slate is channel number four. And it is daytime out here. As you can tell, it is still operational and recording. So I'm now going to be bringing in all these devices because they've been out here for about 25 hours, I think it is, roughly. And we're going to see how well the time code holds up after approximately 25 hours of run and not being rejammed ever since. Here we are in Reaper, where I've already set up both audio tracks, the first one being the 13 hours after they were jammed together via the app, and the second one, the 25 hours after they were jammed together using the app. And then I exploded them in Reaper into individual tracks and then labeled each one of those tracks. So that way we have 13 hours next to 25 hours. And then I added the longitudinal time code reader down below. So you can see master right here, matches master here, TC1, TC1. Time code two, time code two, and the Slate SL1 right there. So now we are ready to simply hit play and see how well these things are aligned. But actually, you know what we should do first? I'm going to hit pause right here. Eight, 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 eight. So we're starting off 12 hours into um, our test, and we're seeing everything perfect already aligned. Now, I want to point one thing out to you here. If you notice, the master is what everything was jammed off of. And this line right here, you can see how the time code kind of goes up and down accordingly. Sometimes as these, as the time code will travel across here, this is where the information is and the, and the, the, all the data is kept. And what might happen here a couple of times is this little line right here, where the time code is being read might be overlapping a little bit into another time code. So you see, they might actually shift alignment ever so slightly. Like if I paused exactly right here on this line, it may not be perfectly, uh, you know, it may be enough to actually push that over to the next number or maybe not. These could drift as little as one one hundredth of a percent and it would still show up as a different number completely. So here's something also to consider at a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, then you're talking about 48,000 samples per second. And if you split that into 23.976, 24, 25, or even 29.97 sections there to basically split up the samples evenly amongst your individual frames, you're still talking about over 1600 samples per second. So as long as those samples don't drift more than 800 samples, basically, then the time code is still accurate to 0.5 ppm, which is what D80 claims. So even though we're looking at it here and it could still be drifted quite a bit more on the screen than what you would expect it to, it's still very much within one entire visible frame of your video. The very first test was everything was in sync. So hitting pause, 16, 16, 16, 16. Let's play, pause, one, 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 play, pause, 11, 11, 11, play, pause, 29, 29, 29. They're all in sync. This is 12 hours after, 13 roughly, 16, 16, 16. They're all in sync. You can see, okay, so 10, 9, 9, 9. So right here, this might have jumped into the next slight little bitty 
hundredth of a percent and it's reading slightly ahead, one frame ahead. But I'm sure that if I hit pause, again, one, 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 one. So we're back in sync. So, I mean, this these are still in alignment here. Let's go ahead and jump ahead to 25 hours into our recording. So went back out there, recorded 25 hours after we originally jam synced them. And let's hit play, pause after seeing, where's the time code right there? And pause, 27, 26, 26, 26, okay? And 25, 24, 24, 25, 24, 25, 24, okay? 21, 21, 21, 21, 4, 4, 4, 4, 11, 11, or 11, 10, 10, 10. These are all so close, man. It's 28, 28, 28. So despite being below freezing temperatures for over 25 hours, these things are still in sync. Look at this. This is the ac kind of accuracy we did not see in time code only a few years ago, but the DD is able to maintain it because of that 0.5 ppm temperature compensated crystal oscillator. I call it a win, even in very, very cold weather. You may be wondering why I don't just take a screenshot of the Citus Audio app and then compare time code that way. It's because it's not accurate, that's why. Bluetooth itself has delays, and while the Citus Audio app is very effective at verifying that everything has been synced correctly and even changing settings, if you're too far away from each devices, that can give you latency and verify time code is inaccurate, even though it's actually in sync just fine. Look at these two freeze frames. On the left, I took one screenshot of the app with a master a few feet away from the other devices, line of sight through an open window, showing what I would call accurate results. And on the right, not even five seconds later, I took a second screenshot from about 20 feet to walls and a metal refrigerator away. This shows the time code to be as much as seven frames off. So while the Citus Audio app is certainly convenient, you still have to verify accurate time code directly out of the time code devices itself. Now, I know that running one test over 24 hours is not the same is running tests every single day in the field and seeing those results in real time. But hey, I think this shows promise. And don't forget, if you are concerned about your TC1s and TCSL1s drifting a little bit in sub-freezing weather, all you have to do is open up the Citus Audio app and hit rejam. And if you've experienced drift from any of these pro time code devices, then please tell me in the comments down below. But for right now, my work here is done. And believe it or not, here in Atlanta, in the next 48 hours, the weather is literally going up about 50 degrees. So I'm not going to be able to do any more freezing tests. And if you're interested in seeing how well these devices operate in even more extreme temperatures, no, I'm not about to bathe them in liquid nitrogen, nor am I going to put them in my air fryer. I think I've made my point. So thank you for tuning in this episode of Soundspeeds. Be sure to tune in the future for more follow-ups, tests that other people just don't want to do, and as always, sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.